I want to talk to you about five things that you might not know or understand as a somewhat beginner filmmaker. On my YouTube channel and on my videos, I see so many comments of you guys asking things about things like exposure, autofocus, what frame rates and resolution you guys should be doing. So I want to give you just a basic little rundown on how I like to use those settings and what I would recommend doing for you. I also have a cool tip at the end that might apply to even some of the more advanced people and it's something that a lot of people don't know. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks and we're going to speak about them a little bit more later on in this video. Let's get to the first topic and that is going to be your exposure settings. Now, so many people say that you should only shoot in manual. You have to shoot in manual if you want to be serious, if you want to be professional about it. And I do think that you absolutely need to understand how to shoot in manual and be able to know what your settings should be, understand the little exposure triangle. But I don't think that you can only ever film in manual exposure and I'll tell you why. There's a couple of different little scenarios where you might be better off having the camera, making adjustments on the fly. If you're in an environment where the light is changing, maybe you're going from inside to outside or you're gonna be panning from the direct sunlight onto something that's more in the shade. I find it's helpful to have your camera in something like aperture priority or shutter priority so that your camera can figure out the perfect exposure and change it for you. Otherwise your camera is going to go from something overexposed to underexposed and that's worse. It's not ideal having the change of exposure in your shot and a lot of cameras do it in a kind of jumpy way. But if you do find yourself in that situation where you have to go from a light to dark situation or vice versa, I find having it in something like shutter or aperture priority is much more helpful. I do think it is very important to know how to shoot in manual mode and get really used to that. I'm still going to be shooting in that 90% of the time and it's very important to understand the settings that your camera would change for you on its own. Second thing we're going to be talking about is the focus modes you guys should be using. Now, these days, in my opinion, I find that the cameras are so good at doing autofocus that I'm almost always in autofocus. If I need to do a specific shot that requires me to shoot in manual focus, maybe I'm doing a rack focus like from my foreground to something in the distance, I'm gonna hit it over into manual. Other than that, I'm pretty much only ever gonna be shooting in complete autofocus. In some scenarios, if I have maybe my subject over here and I got some foreground in front of it and my camera is struggling to figure out what I want in focus, it's kind of jumping onto the foreground and focusing on that or jumping into the background and it doesn't really know, then I might switch my camera over into something like flexible spot and I can select where on the screen I want my camera to focus and I'll put that little square onto my subject. I shoot on a Sony camera personally. If you guys are shooting on Canon cameras, there's the same style features that you guys can pick between. 99% of the time, full autofocus mode, running around, camera nails the focus almost every single time. Number three is gonna be frame rates and resolutions because generally they go together. If I'm filming anything like this, a talking scenario, or anything that I don't want to slow down into slow motion footage, I'm gonna be shooting at 24 frames per second. That is the most cinematic frame rate that there really is. And I know some of the gamers are like, no, 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 you need to shoot in 60 frames per second, it looks much better. That is the case for something like gaming, but for when you are trying to recreate a cinematic video, 24 frames is the way that you want it to be. It has just enough jerk in it to create that nice motion blur. Almost all of real cinema movies are filmed in 24 frames per second. If I want to film slow motion, I'm going to crank that up to something like 120 frames per second, allowing me to slow my footage down to pretty much 20%. If I don't want as much slow motion, I'm gonna shoot in 60 frames per second because you have to remember, the higher your frame rate, the less quality that video is gonna have in each one of those frames that it captures. Your camera is limited to a certain file size per second for each video that you're recording and the more frames that you're trying to cram into that means less quality for each one of those frames. 
Don't film everything in 120 frames per second and think that you're gonna decide later if you want it normal speed or slow motion. If you can't decide and you might use it in slow motion, then maybe go for something like 60. But if you're gonna be shooting something like this where someone is talking, you know you're not gonna slow down that footage, so make sure to shoot that in 24 frames per second. Little bonus tip, no matter what frame rates you guys shoot and edit in, you need to be rendering out your final video in 24 frames per second so that it retains that cinematic look. Going with resolutions and how I like to do it, depending on the frame rates, it's gonna give you some limitations on what resolutions you can achieve with the frame rate that you're pairing with it. So generally, if I'm gonna shoot something in 24p, I can put my camera up into 4K and it still lets me do that. When I'm shooting something like 120 frames per second, I'm gonna to have to go down to 1080p, which is another way that I'm gonna be losing a whole lot of that quality. If you guys need to shoot in 4K, a neat little trick that you can do is shoot in 30 frames per second, slow your clip down to 90%, and it just gives it a slightly smoother feel, and if you don't have the ability to shoot in that higher frame rate, it can still be helpful. Even if it's something like filming on your drone or on your smartphone, it still gives you that little edge of slow motion that just smooths everything out. Here's a quick little tip for you guys. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. And the tip is, if you think that you have to film every single shot that's in your video, I have something really awesome to share with you guys. Storyblocks is an online stock media website with over a million assets. And if you guys don't ever have the right video footage or sound effects or music, you can head on over to Storyblocks and you can use some of the stock assets that they have to include in your videos and make your video more professional, help you tell that story that you're trying to tell without you having to go out and film every single shot. Storyblocks has an ongoing initiative called Restock where they are changing the game of stock footage, including more people from all aspects of the globe. And their current initiative is including more indigenous people in their stock media. Storyblocks is changing the game in stock media and I'm super proud to be a part of a company that is doing such awesome things in the filmmaking community. If you guys want to check out Storyblocks, you can use the link in the top of my description. They truly are an amazing platform for creators like you and I. So go and check them out, sign up. Other than that, let's get to the next tip. Number four is going to be about stable versus shaky shots. Undoubtedly, you guys have seen everybody shooting on gimbals and getting these like amazing, perfectly smooth shots. And I absolutely love gimbals. I love shooting stuff on gimbals, but it doesn't mean that you should always be trying to achieve that most stable look that you can. Sometimes having shaky or movements in your shots is also beneficial, depending on the scene and the story that you're trying to tell. So. For example, think of like a crazy action scene in a movie. You wouldn't want your shots to be perfectly stabilized and show exactly how that movement is happening. You wanna create a bit of that chaos in that shot and it creates a bit of that feeling for the viewer that it's just a little bit uneasy, it's really fast, it's moving along, going all over the place, it creates a completely different feeling to just that perfectly locked off, almost robotic stabilized shot. So you gotta figure out what you're filming, figure out which one of those is gonna pair better with that specific scenario, and then decide on if you wanna try and achieve that ultimate stabilization, or if you wanna have those movements in your videos. This goes for if you're just shooting handheld as well, maybe you're getting the perfectly smooth handheld handheld shots or as perfect as you can get handheld, maybe that's not necessarily the best idea. I have been getting more and more into shooting handheld with quite a long lens and just including a little bit of movement in my shots creates a really cool feeling even if it's for someone running along the beach or like walking on the edge of a cliff, having some close-ups and movements like that creates a very unique and awesome looking shot in the end. So experiment with it, mix the two together, some really smooth ones and then some more movementy ones. You get some really nice results, play around with it and get creative. Tip five is gonna kind of go along with the stable versus shaky shots. And this is if you guys are trying to get a continuous motion shot or a really stable shot, it's to make sure that you are actually keeping it continuous. If it's a super smooth shot like this, and then there's a little bit of a change of direction, 
and then it keeps moving in a change of direction or even if you're just moving in and it changes speed like that it takes away from that whole smooth shot makes it look not nearly as nice. Inevitably, you're gonna get those little movements in your shots, even if you're shooting on a gimbal, because the gimbal's gonna readjust and move around a little bit. So when you guys are editing that video, make sure you cut the parts that are gonna have no change or any variation in that shot. This is the same for if you've ever seen a dead giveaway of amateur videos, is when someone's filming and they're adjusting the zoom while the shot is still playing. You don't want that kind of change in the shots unless you're doing it for a very specific reason. Ideally, you want each shot to have its own one movement, change to a different shot, its own movement. You don't wanna have more than one different movement in each one of your shots. So if you have been worried about what settings you should be using, what resolution, what frame rates, I hope this video helps, gives you a little bit more of an understanding of how your camera works and how you can make that camera work for you. Hope you found this video beneficial. That is gonna be it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.